Hello. Good morning, America, and good evening, Slovenia. My name is Anna Maria, and I would like to welcome you all to today's already sixth webinar of the Entrepreneurship in New Reality webinars. So firstly, let us just, just check if you can hear me well, and if you can see me well, just send something in the chat so that I know that everything is working as it should be. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. Thank you so much. Uh, so, of course, uh, before we start, thank you all for joining us here for today's webinar. Uh, I would like to thank to all our guest speakers today that we have, uh, to our moderator, and of course to you who are interested to hear and exchange the views and to learn more about digitalization and where are the potential for uh, startups and companies and what do this uh, digitalization actually brings about after these COVID uh, times. So for all of you who are here today with us for the first time, let me just uh, briefly explain what the ANR project is actually uh, all about. So the Entrepreneurship in New Reality is actually a series of 10 webinars covering 10 actual uh, topics in this uh, post-COVID new reality time that we call it. And we have brought together more than 30 guest speakers coming from both United States, Slovenia, and today also Croatia, uh, to share their professional know-how, ideas, and perspectives in these uh, new times. And of course, we are eager to connect uh, perspectives from both sides of the ocean. Uh, so this project was created by GEA College, a faculty of entrepreneurship, uh, who is a modern business center. And we have been educating young and future entrepreneurs for more than uh, 30 years now. And of course, this project wouldn't be possible without uh, support and cooperation of United States Embassy here in Ljubljana. And of course, I would like to thank to thanks uh, also to our national and international partners. So thank you all. Uh, so before I give the floor to our moderator for today, I hope that uh, you will all learn some uh, new knowledge, new ideas, so that you can uh, grow both as entrepreneurs and, individu and uh, uh, individuals in this uh, new reality. And of course, I do encourage you all to turn your cameras on and of course, to be active and set questions for our guest speakers so that we can make really a lively and a fruitful uh, panel. And now, before uh, we start, uh, I would like to introduce and present our uh, moderator for today, uh, Jure Verhonik, who is joining us today from 4PD Digital Innovation Hub at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering from University of Ljubljana. Jure is uh, an active supporter and promoter, connector of startups, and is interested in all things innovation and, of course, uh, digitalization. So uh, welcome, Jure, and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Anna Maria. Uh, I would like to, to welcome uh, all of our participants and, of course, our guests. Today with us is uh, Michael Goldberg from Case Western uh, Reserve University, uh, Marios Primic uh, coming from University of Zagreb, and Urška Selinker from the company Abelium from, from Slovenia. So I hope uh, in this one hour we will uh, introduce to you a lot of interesting things in the field of digitalization. And uh, as Anna Marie already said, uh, we are uh, appreciating if you will ask the questions to our guests and on this way you will become the information you like to hear. So who is Michael? Michael is a venture capitalist, he's an entrepreneur and also a professor. Uh, Mario is also professor, have a lot of business experience and experience on international accreditations. And Urška is passionate for the corporate communications, managing relationship, and she also write, like to write uh, uh, professional articles. So welcome, uh, my guests. And now I will ask, uh, kindly ask you to introduce yourself in, in uh, what are you doing and of course, what are your hobbies? Please, Michael, if you are so kind and be the first one. 
Great. Uh, thanks, you, Ray. It's, it's awesome to be um, with you virtually. Um, I did have a chance to visit uh, Slovenia on a grant. Um, I know Tanya from the U.S. Embassy is on the call. Um, at, uh, in 2017, I did a short program um, in uh, Slovenia and had a wonderful time. I am in Cleveland, Ohio, the home. I, I think we were once, or if, if we're not still like the second largest city of, of uh, Slovenians outside of Ljubljana. So I have a lot of friends in Cleveland of Slovenian um, descent. Um, and uh, I work at a university, Case Western Reserve University, as you already mentioned, I have a background in venture capital um, and working at startups. Um, I also have a, an online course and I'll put some links in the chat as we go along. I just did put my LinkedIn um, profile. Love to connect with any of you on the call and Really look forward to the conversation today with Yure, Mario, and Urshka. Thank you very much, Urshka. The floor is yours. Um, yeah, hello, also from my side. So um, I'm kind of a head of corporate uh, communications at Abelium. So we are an R&D firm with uh, mostly focused on solving problems. We like to say complex problems, even though all problems are complex. But uh, besides that, I'm generally interested in marketing and everything related to brand building, storytelling, and like how to implement new solutions, new trends, everything uh, tech related. And of course, uh, all the uh, innovations in our field that uh, are worth uh, uh, knowing to know how to implement those into the real world problems. So this is kind of, I would say, but regardless of that, like you see, I'm a passionate hiker. So this is also something where I recharge regularly and looking forward to the debate. So thanks. Thank you very much, Ushka and Maria. So good morning, good afternoon to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I am full professor at the Faculty of Economics and Business University of Zagreb, Croatia. My background is uh, multidiscipline. So uh, my bachelor's degree is from mathematics. Then I was working for as a computer programmer for a number of years at some Croatian companies. Then realized that my tech knowledge is not good enough to go on with a business career and engage into the MBA in IT management as a master course and then uh, on, join the academia and finish my PhD in digital economy in 2002. I'm also the visiting professor at many international schools, including the uh, uh, Imperial College London, Shanghai University of International Business and Economics, La Sapienza Roma, and so on, GAC College as well. Uh, I have a broad international experience and also uh, keep close ties with the corporate uh, sector, working as a consultant for digital transformation and cybersecurity for a number of the companies. I'm looking for debate. I'm looking forward for uh, to to discussion and uh, uh, and a um, fruitful debate here at this event. Thank you. And your hobby? Oh, my hobbies. I used to play basketball, so it, it was one of the greatest hobbies I had. Uh, so, but, but I, I injured my knee and uh, that the great career was over. Uh, and uh, right now I'm, I'm just uh, supporting my, my <laughs> guys, my crew, uh, my team and as at afternoon at, at drinks and so on, but also uh, a lot of uh, different hobbies uh, related to the staying in shape, staying, staying in good physical condition and so on. Great, thank you very much. So the first question, uh, now in March, there will be one year of pandemic. So we have one year of special situation. Uh, can you describe what was, what is the main change and how many hours more are you sitting before the computer than, you know, one year be before the pandemic? Ushka, can you start please? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, um, of course, because we do uh, much of R&D stuff and tech. So we have already been uh, in line with all those working from home schedules and uh, all the equipment uh, is like something that we do. We, it's not that this would kind of uh, address our, our organizational problems as such, but what, so we mostly have had the experience of helping out our partners and other um, clients. So this is something that kind of changed uh, our process of working. Uh, so not so much focusing on solving strategic and most uh, 
idea uh, um, level projects, but mostly fixing the problems as they came because we had those kind of issues with uh, starting the communications and the flows of cooperation. So this is something that kind of changed our lives in that process. But overall, what we see is, of course, just accelerating the, the whole uh, business. Um, and so many opportunities have been, uh, uh, have erased and also uh, new emerged. Uh, so we, we did kind of good. I can't say that the pandemic uh, has been uh, rough to us because we are in the field that is kind of, you know, much needed. Um, so in that effort, I would say that it did, uh, did this good. So organizational part also works in line with that kind of culture. So um, we try to, to give our knowledge of doing the business uh, online also to our partners and those we cooperate with. Okay, thank but you. Sorry. Uh, sorry, just wanted to say overall, of course, everything has accelerated. So I, we will talk about this uh, in the later. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Uh, Mario, what about you? Or what about the, uh, the okay. 2020? You yeah, how, mean? How, what is so the well, plenty of things before the pandemic and after COVID and all these things, plan, plan, number of the things happened. So at the school I'm with, so at the Faculty of Economics and Business, we shifted to online classes very, very, uh, in very short period of time. So uh, the period of adjustment was very short and we should do that. There were, as you know, two major earthquakes in Zagreb in Croatia. So well, that was a major disturbance. And you know, when, when you're building, and this is a, the, the, the picture behind me. So when your building is partially uh, uh, destroyed and so on, well, you you cannot do uh, your physical classes if you would like, and not, not to mention COVID. So very rough year, very very much uh, not a lot of challenges here, uh, but we managed to keep on with uh, with uh, great uh, online uh, and, uh, online classes, and our students were very happy about that, and uh, all of us as well. Uh, from the you know, research perspective. Uh, so many new research papers on the digitalization, so many new things uh, where uh, we all uh, adjusted to all these environments where, where we are living and where we are working. You know that, all of us do know that um, many business processes shifted to online environment in very short period of time. It, is, it, it became very, very, um, very soon, it became very familiar to all of us to um, go on working, uh, meeting, uh, agreeing on Zoom and similar uh, platforms and so on. Uh, not to mention that um, uh, we we all gained some new skills on that. Uh, in 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 the country I'm coming from, uh, in Croatia, we realized that digitalization is possible. Uh, in many in public services in private uh, sector, uh, we realized that many barriers uh, before uh, coming from different um, organizational or other perspectives. Uh, have gone with the notion of the uh, we should do that we we must do that there there is no other there is no other choice uh, so very challenging year uh, and in my opinion uh, all these unexpected events were in favor of the digitalization and digital transformation and we finally realized that it was not the technology which is the problem in very complex solutions of the digitalization it was the organization and the barriers to change in in minds in people's minds so in my opinion as a kind of wrap up of the 2020 and the previous period uh, I think that we uh, pay so much attention on the technology. Technology is evolving and so on, and we are quite witnessing the major evolvement of the technology. But I think in my opinion, in my modest opinion, uh, that organizations uh, are, are not developing in such a fa fast pace uh, than, than technology. And we should pay more attention to development of the organization, not uh, not just development of the, of the technology itself. So that was some of the lessons I have learned working as a consultant for many companies, and especially from the research and the and the teaching teaching field. Thank you, Michael. Endemic? What pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I shouldn't even joke. Yeah, I mean, what a year. Um, you know, we actually, at, one of the things that I um, do at our university is that I lead our MBA students. We do, um, I mean, many um, universities do take their students on, on experiential courses, right? So we were a, about three or four days away from leaving to go to um, the country of Colombia in South America. And um, we ended up um, like most travel, this was the beginning of March, got canceled. You know, what was interesting, the way I set up that course is um, I typically work, in that case, I was working with an entrepreneur based in Bogota, and we set up little consulting projects. So um, in this case, we would pair students with an entrepreneur, have them engaged in a business model challenge. Sometimes it has to do with kind of internationalization of their business. And then we go to the country and I've done this in a few different places. And then, you know, it, there's nothing better. I mean, what would be better, although Zoom is great, there's nothing better than like being in Ljubljana sitting with all of you or sitting in Zagreb. I mean, there isn't a substitute for it. Although tools like Zoom, um, have to suffice. So that's what we did with our class. So we, we continued our consulting projects so the students never met their entrepreneurs except virtually. And, you know, the projects actually turned out pretty well. Um, I, you know, I feel like something experientially, they missed smelling, you know, the, the air in Bogota or Medellin, tasting the food, you know, exploring the nightlife, all the things that we all know and love about exploring other places, but you can get work done um, as we've been doing over the past year. So yeah, I think we're all adapting. To me, that, that particular course and experience was like so jarring because, um, and for many of my, I mean, I think for Europeans like yourselves, you're used to being crossing borders. Um, many of our American students, this course that I teach, like sometimes it's the first time they've ever traveled outside of the United States. So um, so I hope we get that back soon. I'm already planning for my next international trip, but we've, I think we've all done the best that we, that we can, whether it's in a teaching setting, whether it's in a work setting um, and obviously using tools like the one we're using today. Uh, what, what do you think will, will be the, after the pandemic, will the, the way of doing business go back to be, you know, the way who, who, what was before the pandemic or will stay on the same level as now as, you know, will, will, will the companies use more personal, uh, uh, you know, personal meetings or will stay on uh, Zoom and, and Teams and so on? What do you think? Should I start? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'll find the link. McKinsey just did a um, announced a survey on business travel. I mean, I think they're predicting post pandemic business travel will be down something like 30% even once we're back. Um, you know, hey, as someone who loves to travel, I hope the answer is no, we're not going to eliminate um, the need. I'm curious what my colleagues think as well. I mean, there is something about being in person, traveling, all the things that we know and love about these experiences. Um, you know, but I do think, I mean, you're starting to obviously see in the US, I don't know if this is true in Croatia or uh, in Slovenia, some companies like Twitter um, and even not everyone at Facebook, but certain com companies, I mean, Twitter's told their employees, you can stay remote forever. So what does that mean? Actually, for a city like Cleveland, where our housing is actually relatively in cost of living is cheap as compared to San Francisco, it's kind of an advantage. Um, so we're luring talent here in a different way. Um, so there's going to be winners and losers in many senses of the world, the word, um, because of the changes, because travel is going to be down and distributed distributed workforces but um i can't wait to start traveling again me too <laughs> okay thank you uh, what uh, mario what do you think about 
what will happen after the pandemic? So, well, I'm also, um, I, I cannot wait starting traveling, uh, n n not just to Ljubljana, to Slovenia, but also to any other places, any other countries. Uh, so I'm, as far as the, as the, mm, mm, as, as your question, Yuri, is concerned, so I'm noticing in Croatia that there are many companies that are also uh, experiencing or trying to experiment with kind of blended way of working. As we know at the universities, we realize that online uh, classes has his uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages and blended way of doing it. Uh, so combination with the physical classes and online classes is a kind of uh, good recipe. I uh, noticed that many companies, especially tech companies, are trying to experiment with that. Uh, so we have a number of the companies which are having three days physical presence in the office combined with the two days in the online environment. Or oh, well, uh, one week of the online uh, combined with uh, one week with the physical. So this COVID environment also uh, has learned us to, or make us to do so. In my opinion, I think many companies will, 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 will try to stay with that uh, formula, with, the, with that recipe and add up kind of, uh, um, kind of uh, uh, good, uh, good mix of uh, uh, quality of uh, life and mix of quality of uh, life and uh, um, and business, business life and pride of life, and in that way add value to the to the employees. Uh, also, on the other hand, um, I think that uh, this inevitable processes of digitalization uh, should go on. And I, in my opinion, I think that uh, so few companies will uh, will go back uh, and try to do the processes and activities in in, in in the previous way. I think that we have started that wheel of digitalization and that uh, will, will go on. Um, especially because of the fact that, uh, that the markets and the competitors uh, will, uh, will, will force all the companies to go on with digitalization and digital transformation. Okay, and Uchka, what do you think? Yeah, I also think that we are all hungry for human interactions. So this is something that is part of us and it's been, uh, stolen from us, if I can say as such. Uh, so I do believe that uh, we will start uh, building more on this human centric approaches on all areas which we work in. So uh, at home to know how to balance work and life uh, at companies to know how to manage some kind of meaningful workplaces. I think that everybody will need to focus on internal um motivations that drive us because uh, like we can see now you can work uh, for any company in the world now and and uh, vice versa so your employees can work for anybody almost uh, in today's uh, all connected world so i do believe that <clears throat> the good parts of the digitalization as such that came out of it, it will of course uh uh, be part of our lives also in the future. So this is not something that we can unlearn, but what we can learn and we will have to learn is how to cope with this in the real lives. So what I'm kind of um, afraid of is that, that we have lost uh, a lot of this um, humanity in this uh, too much of Zooming and technologies and everything uh, non-personal and that we will have troubles in um, making the, those borders uh, more approachable and uh, part of the next solutions which we will implement and deliver to again customers and the market so this kind of uh, balance will have to be found to evolve and grow together okay great so uh, we have uh, first two questions, as I, as I can see. So first, I would like to thank Katya for the first question. And the question is, what are the advantages that the digitalization is bringing into business? What tools do you suggest to use to increase businesses? Business, sorry. So who will answer for the first question? Well, I can try if, if you do not mind. So. Uh, the well, digitalization is a kind of process which is uh, helping companies to adapt or adjust business processes with the use of new digital technologies. So uh, it is the notion of the digital technologies that, that is helping the companies to be able to, uh, to reinvent or reconsider 
what business processes are and to what extent these business these this business processes should be changed, should be innovated, should be uh, improved, and so on. Well, I'm, I'm pointing I'm pointing out to, to, to the number of the digital technologies which were independently developed. For example, artificial intelligence was in, independently developed uh, compared to the cloud computing, big data, and so on. But we have the ability to use all these technologies at once in order to question the usual existing business processes. For example, digital technologies have, uh, are able to extract information from physical devices. If you put up a sensor on a physical device, Internet of Things sensor or something like that, program it uh, to send the data on this, uh, how this device is doing, for example, matter, uh, water matter or gas matter or whatever. And then the protocols which are, in, in, which are uh, used here as another digital technology have the ability to disseminate that data quickly, store it on the cloud, and then you have the ability to instantly analyze large quantities of data to do advanced analytics on that. And that might be the cornerstone and the background for changing your business processes. In that okay. way, many companies are becoming data-driven companies. And that enables them the opportunity to go on questioning their existing business processes and to go on innovating or coming up with the new business models, not just the notion of the digitalization is connected with the um, improvement of existing business processes with the help of digital technologies, but also the digital transformation is uh, how to innovate the entire business model with the help of all these digital technologies. Thank you very much. One question, because there was a, uh, there were a question about the tools. You know, startups normally do, do not have any, uh, not a lot of money. So what, you know, what, what, what tools you, sh they should use? I mean, what is your opinion or opinion from all of your three? Yes, yeah, so... Or Kushka, sorry, Kushka. From my perspective, I would say uh, that there are, if one thing that also the pandemic has brought to us is this uh, open sphere of uh, mindset. So everything shared and everything open source is more than welcome. And also uh, through to this collaborations that have emerged, uh, many of those, of those solutions are also safe and uh, in really, uh, and also a good uh, complement to the to those that are, uh, you know, licensed and for startups uh, perspective, uh, would say uh, costly, but you can use uh, many tools from the Google platform or the also um, all this video conferencing uh, tools are all approachable. So I think that these are the 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 main. Uh, um, uh, the, the main ones for operating as such. So you need something to put your uh, communication on and for some where you store the information and for those that are also operating in the field that you do. So uh, it's kind of hard to say which tools are most appropriate to you, but I would say that use those that the, the whole team is comfortable using it because uh, the, the worst part is that you just implement new tools because of the tools, not because of the, um, uh, the operation itself and to speed up the conversations or the processes uh, in which you operate. So use those that you already do uh, master uh, at those. And if you see that there's something missing in some function or something, uh, ask yourself uh, if you can implement that in that tool, not just getting a new one. So, but there are many tools uh, you can choose. Uh, I will post a link with uh, for, for all the fields if you want to. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michael, do you have something to add to? to yeah, I was just gonna add, and th thank you, Urshka, it's a great comment about, I think oftentimes entrepreneurs, the key to successful startups um, is obviously assessing the landscape of what is available. And, um, you know, there are um, what, at least in the US, I like this is true in Europe as well. While the economic impact of, of the pandemic has been harsh on so many industries, for venture capital, and, and actually subsequent funding for startups, like 2020 has been a really robust year. 
Um, and I think a lot of it is driven by kind of what Mario and Urshka said. I mean, it's, um, you know, particularly in areas, whether we call it digitization or just sort of other utilities to kind of solve problems. Um, I mean, I was just going to go order my lunch because I have, after this, I have to go grab a lunch and then class, like I never was ordering online before the pandemic. And obviously there's many tools that are out there that are enabling um, transactions to happen. You know, the digital ordering of meals was not new before 2020, but it's accelerated. And I think there's a number of different areas where you're seeing acceleration happen and you're seeing capital formation behind it. So you're seeing, I mean, right now valuations for startup companies are really robust um, and high um, in a way that we may not have expected. We might have thought, all right, this is, you know, it's a down cycle in the economy. So investors are going to sort of sit back with their capital and, and wait. But, you know, the vaccine is here for some of us, not yet in every country and not yet in many parts of the world. But, um, you know, I think there's, there's, I think a lot of excitement around digital tools and digital um, applications that you're seeing investors getting behind. Okay, thank you very much. So before we are going to answer the next question, question from Sebastian, I would ask Anne-Marie to, uh, no, to, to announce the pool. Anne-Marie, are you with us? Yes, oh, yes, absolutely. Here it Great. is. So I would, I, I would ask all the participants to answer the questions and so we can see and submit it so we can see what will be the answer. Okay. We can go ahead. I think we're gonna need like a minute or two for okay. all the attendees to answer. So we can, we can go to the, the, the next question. And the next question is, do you believe that pandemic can bring new professions in digitalization faster and what profession, profession should that be? So what, what are the new, new uh, working places or professions? You can see the question also on, on chat. So what, what do you think, Mario? Okay, so well, we are witnessing that if the, the world is changing very, very fast. So we are, in fact, we are, we are living in disrupted world, and not necessarily because of the pandemic. So the world uh, uh, before pandemic was also very disrupted with the notion of the digital technologies, with the digital disruption and game changing scenarios. So we get used to the fact that there are many new jobs that never, ne never been here 10 years ago, something like that. So uh, it is, so we are quite used that uh, future, of the future jobs will be quite different than it was before. Uh, and these, are, these, these things are inevitable consequence of, uh, of uh, uh, digital solutions and di digitalization. Uh, in many ways, uh, so some new jobs might be that never existed or some of five, 10 years ago. For example, is mobile application developer, social media manager, then artificial intelligence uh, specialist, cloud computing specialist, data scientist, big data, uh, uh, big data an analyst, or then sustainability manager. Uh, for example, another set of new jobs might be YouTube content creator, millennial expert. Uh, so a range of jobs which are affecting technology and also organizations which might be uh, one of the jobs of the future. Regarding pandemic itself, of course, epidemiologists are in, in the spotlight right now. Uh, but I think that uh, if, if we can extend that, that uh, any public services or public health services will be much more in, important in the future because in people in many countries worldwide are quite aware of the fact that public health uh, is a is, uh, is necessary thing. Uh, is, and it helps us a lot to, to go on with, uh, to overcome all these issues of the pandemic. But in my opinion, many, many changes in the, in, in the future of the jobs will be technology-based and we'll be witnessing quite a number of the new jobs, uh, the, 
uh, educational systems should be should be ready to to produce them. And, and if I can uh, if I can uh, end with that, uh, one one quote is quite uh, interesting to me. So who is the illiterate person in twenty? In, 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 the, in these times, in, in, in this uh, 21st century. So we know that some 10 years, 15 years ago, illiterate person was a person who cannot read and write. In my opinion, today, in digital economy, illiterate person is a person who cannot learn, who, who do not have capacity to learn and gain new knowledge in order to be ready to, to, work, in, to work in new environments and so on. So learning, unlearning, and relearning in my opinion, are three key capacities and uh, competencies one should have in order to stay competent in the job. And then uh, all, all changes in the, in the future of the jobs will be much more easier if you, if you have all these competencies. Okay. Oshka, Michael, do you have something you know, to, to add to this, what Mario said? Mario was quite elaborate, if so, there's not much to add, but I do agree with everything he said. Okay. Also, uh, of course, that uh, what I would uh, make more effort into it is build yourself a kind of a, um, a pool of talent, uh, because you have so many resources inside of the company and around you. So. Uh, if you're willing to, not just willing, but you ha you will just have to get that mindset of constant learning and uh, getting those skills that you are missing out and finding the, the, the ways to motivate also your people to uh, get them to know those and conquer those skills. So I, I do believe that much can be done with reskilling and uh, refocusing of the current human resources you have so just follow the trends and the needs that will help you do better work and also that will make you more uh, uh, um, comfortable with uh, uh, accepting all the new uh, technologies and do get the, uh, the skills that you need from the uh, from your colleagues and also from all the uh, the great uh, internet where you can almost find anything you need to just write and ask YouTube and you can be the next uh, scientist or expert of that field which you would like to improve. So don't just look about the new talents that you have to hire uh, but do uh, look inside uh, of your company, your people and give them chance to grow because they will be much more eager to do so. Okay, thank you very much. We have, we have two more questions. The first one from Stoyan is, what scale of economic crisis can we expect in reality? What will happen when the pandemic will be over and all the supporting measurements, we are, I'm talking about Slovenia and also Croatia so far I know, will not be longer existing. So no more money from the state. What do you think, Michael? So, and we're wrestling with this right now in the US. So the, the new administration has a, um, a very uh, large package to extend. I mean, everything, it doesn't matter if it's the US, Croatia, or Slovenia, everything's taking longer to get back to normal. Um, and yeah, I mean, when you pull out the safety net of government support, it's going to be very harsh. Um, it's been harsh for so many sectors right now, but, um, you know, and, and there's a lot of, 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 of continued, at least, you know, I think both in the EU and here, continued debt that we've taken on to sort of get through the crisis. So um, it's a challenge. I mean, there's a number of like initiatives, like in Ohio and in Cleveland, where I am, where entrepreneurship is supported that we don't think government will be there to continue to back, even though job creation often comes from new company formation. So um, no, I think it's a great question. I think we don't really know. I think it's gonna take more and longer sustained government involvement than, than perhaps the political leaders want to acknowledge, but it's, it, we're not going to like get the vaccines and bounce back out of this like overnight. Okay. Something to add? 
Maria, Wuska. So it will be, there will be hard times coming on us, I believe. Yeah, well. yeah, for sure. But but well, some companies, some tech companies or, or digital economy companies might be uh, in favor or in, in in having advantage because of their agile business models, uh, uh, and they are not so uh, dependent of the government help or funds and so on. So um, that that might mean that in the in the 2021 and so on uh, these companies which are not so dependent of the government funds and so on and uh, grants and similar things uh, will, will have the opportunity to to grow their business so we witnessed so many companies in this pandemic uh, period that uh, extend uh, increase their value for example uh, zoom so we are we are using zoom uh, Zoom is uh, market value of the Zoom is seven times more than uh, sorry is more than seven airline airline companies best or largest airline companies combined. So with the companies who are using digital platforms and digital business models, so in, in my opinion, they will be more uh, more ready to go on with a uh, with the growth with increase in their business. Okay. Uh, we have another question, and it's uh, from Dita. She is new in the digitalization, and she got the project to uh, prepare a digital strategy for the, the company. The problem is that the people there are older, and they do not want to change the way the, the things are done now, and uh, how to deal with it. Uska? Do you have an idea how to help, Dita? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I would start with conversations. So I would uh, ask so many questions to get the answer from you, Dita, concretely. So, because uh, I do believe that uh, we can solve problems if we uh, know what we are addressing at, uh, what are the motivations, if we understand the the target, if I may say so, but the target is the, the customer or the human on the uh, on the other side for which I'm trying to solve the problem. So I would try to be approachable and, uh, and solving something you already know, but will help you enable you to be better at, at it, so. Okay, any other suggestions, gentlemen? No. Okay. So, so to, uh, I, I, if I may, uh, I would address it to uh, elaborate the question and also uh, we can find uh, the solution for her right now, if she wants. <laughs> Hello, thank you. Um, the problem is that, uh, yeah, people are older where I work and um, when I ask them if they want to change something, that the process will be easier, they say the way it is is the best. Yeah, of course, because everybody is afraid of the change. So start again with uh, uh, being more approachable and ask him, okay, how can I help? Okay. You know, you have to lower the barriers of the fears because we, whenever you ask me something, I would say uh, no, or I don't know, I would say I don't need it. But if you will give me already a solution how to get there, I will be more eager to... Uh, take that approach and try to work harder because I see that also you are giving me something already in the return. So start the conversation. That that would be my first approach, and don't don't uh, don't be denied by her denial or his denial. So help them be better. Thank you. Thank you, Oshka. One question to all of you. Uh, Okay, we, now, we are now having one, one year of this uh, pandemic situation. What is the most positive things coming out of this, uh, this situation? Michael? So, you know, it's interesting, like this kind of programming. Um, I, I have a new role at our university. I'm head of a, um, a, a new entrepreneurship institute and we had actually made a commitment before the pandemic to stream our programming, which was live and in person, but we were streaming it on Facebook and 
ultimately on LinkedIn because um, we wanted to reach more folks. And then when the pandemic hit, we obviously it was pretty easy to then accelerate our programming. Um, and I think these kind of forums that obviously like bring together folks from at least in the four of us from you know three different countries sharing ideas um you know some of this obviously i mean webinars aren't new and you know i mean skype and zoom i mean these these platforms aren't new but i think this willingness of and the ease of getting people together i mean unfortunately we're all not that busy i mean we're busy but we're not you know it's pretty easy to get people to say yes to different events i mean um because people aren't traveling so you know i think i think we've come up at least I've been part of and you know and thank you again for putting this together today when you're bringing different voices together from around the world um, that hopefully will open up ways to collaborate perhaps in person in the future I mean I don't think everything's going to be just you know the four of us having a chat and then just doing more and more digital work I was texting with Tanya when I started I was like I'm ready to come back to Slovenia so um, so I think these these kind of forums and platforms and you know again other tools like Erska said that exist like slack or other tools that i mean now what's the new one that's everybody excited about platform is that the new one that everybody's on no clubhouse I think it's clubhouse, clubhouse yeah. right yeah so now <laughs> everybody's inviting me to clubhouse um you're not great. on and, it you yet. know it's fun to try all these new ways to communicate um so I'm, that's been that's been good but one, one question, and I asked for a very short uh, answer. What do you think? Uh, you know, in the last year, a lot of uh, we, we, were, we were put in the higher level on, on, the, on digitalization. We are speaking about the personal life, we are speaking about the business life, education, whatever. What do you think? How many years were we now? We, were, uh, we have faster development than the, if this pandemic will not happen. You are talking about one year, five years, seven years of development, if there will be normal circumstances, or we are talking about one year, two years. What do you think, Marie? For sure. So I can speak from my own from experience of the company of the university I'm with. So we are the school which are enrolling uh, roughly 10,000 students. And uh, because of the pandemic and so on, so we have the largest faculty, the largest school in the country. Uh, and because of the pandemic, we should shift to the digital enrollment overnight. So you should uh, have your 10,000 or something students enrolled into this, another semester uh, with no physical presence, with no student administration office and so on, but with uh, digitalized solutions, with digitalized service. And it was a quite, quite a challenge uh, to, to get back to the details questions uh, that might be pretty much the same. So, so many people there. Uh, have been reluctant to change so many barriers to change because the digitalization is not a technological issue it, it is a leadership issue how uh, leaders are able to uh, to explain to uh, employees uh, the why the company why that institution should be changed and in, in Europe to answer to your question directly in brief so I think it it, it will it will it, it will took us I think five to six seven years uh, to do that, uh, but with the pandemic uh, environment, we have done that in a couple of couple of months, in six or seven months. Okay. Any other opinion, or you agree with 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 Maria? Okay. Every everyone is uh, are, <laughs> are are agreed with Maria. Great. Uh, before I will give the 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 word uh, back to Anna Marie, just in one sentence or my, not or two sentences. Uh, what is your uh, preposition for startups, how to handle digitalization? And I, I ask, you know, for, for answer of, for, from all of you. Thank you very much. Ushka, can you start, please? Um, yeah, of course, yeah. If, like I said, I, I do think that we, there's much we have to do on our uh, human side and how to implement th that in our daily processes, which are now mostly digitalized and everything is focused on the next new tool that you have to have or uh, master um, and just get back to basics also, you know. 
but what uh, the fun part of the the solo open space that to, we are now entering is uh, and also relevant for startups is start building new uh, protocols on open sources digital the assets that you have uh, decentralize your not just the tools that you have but also your mindset um, with direct uh, you are involved with so internally externally uh, start really building the human centric uh, company that you would like to work in and also the other uh, colleagues will work with you because only that energy and uh, culture that you will build together will bring better solutions and uh, something that will drive you also in the future and just i don't know invest in yourself invest in human capital not just tools so i really honestly do believe that meaningful meaningful workplaces are the ones that will then also bring some very impressive solutions for the market because if we will focus on the problems that really need to be fixed then everybody will uh, have a gain from it so the technology part is well the technology was already here, so there was not something that we have already invented. So like, no buzzwords like blockchain, IE, everything, ER, all those impressive technologies have already been here. But now we were just more accelerated to use them in the solutions that will help us all uh, do, uh, do better and more productive. So now just implement that mindset in the existing solutions and I'm sure that um, there are many many opportunities in which startups can seek for new innovations and uh, making those that already exist better. Okay, thank you very much for these closing words, Mario. Your closing words for the uh, I do agree with Uska. So technology is just one part of the equation. So many startups are technology savvy and would like to come up with a solution which is uh, devoted to any kind of digital technology and, and, and such. So of, of course, technology is very important, but please do not forget to, uh, to build up your team, uh, especially diverse roles in your team. So your team should have technology officer, business development, uh, well, someone with the skills to, to develop the business, then someone who should design the application, someone who should be the user experience specialist and something like that. So try to bring more diverse skills to your, to your team uh, and to, go, to have the ability to, uh, to, to answer to the very simple question every, every start, startup is, is, um, is dealing with. So what is the unique selling point? So what is the customer value proposition? So of your business model, of your idea, of your solution and so on. You can use all, all the tools you, 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 you have at your disposal. For example, business model canvas as a methodology which will help you to analyze different components of the, of the, the business model, especially customer value propositions. So why should someone buy your service or your product and try to develop uh, sustainable revenues, sustainable sources of revenues, try to develop sustainable uh, digital platform or the ecosystem in which, in which you have the opportunity to grow and to increase your impact. So, but please do not forget to be equipped with uh, more diverse employees, more diverse skills, people with more diverse skills in order to be able to, to react to all these, these, these um, changes and so on. Thank you very much. And Michael? The, the last word, the dangerous, the dangerous last word. Um, no, thanks for, um, for having me on this. And, and I thought some of the comments from Urshka and Mario in terms of wrapping up were some things I was thinking about as well. I mean, there's no substitute from engaging with customers for startups. So, I mean, some of the things that Mario was talking about, whether it's using um, tools like the business model canvas or the approach that sort of lean startup and, and getting in front of customers. I mean, I think these are things that we, those of us that educate for a living, which is at least the three of us on the, on this panel, um, you know, we're encouraging our students. I mean, oftentimes, whether it's a student or an entrepreneur, um, they haven't done the hard work necessary to really validate their assumptions. So 
Um, and that's been hard in the pandemic because you had to use things like Zoom. It's not so easy to kind of go up to people on the street. Um, in fact, we discourage people from going up to people on the street during this time. But once we move into a new phase where we're engaging and talking and being in person like that, that customer feedback and testing assumptions is critical. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now we have results from the pool. And we can see that 74% uh, uh, said that uh, the, the level of digitalization was greater than the year before. 9% uh, in very interesting, there is less than uh, 2019 and 22% that is the same as in year 2019. So very interesting results. And as we can see, it's, it's like the, okay, the, the, the greater I can understand, uh, it's, it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was C before, but I must say that it's very interesting that the same, that the last, uh, the last answer, 22% are at the same level of digitalization as one year before, before the pandemic. But great, thank you for the answers. So I would like to uh, thank my guests and also the participants. And now I'm giving the word back to Anne-Marie to close the webinar. So thank you very much. Anne-Marie, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, so first of all, uh, I would like to thanks uh, to uh, give my thanks to all our guest speakers today uh, for an amazing and inspiring panel. So thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Urshka. And of course, thank you, Mario. It was really interesting to hear that digitalization not only changes the processes and how we work, it also changes how we live and we were able to talk about skills and new professions that are going to emerge. So this is definitely uh, an opportunity uh, for everybody to grow, to look for new ideas, look for new business opportunities. And as it was uh, seen in the poll, absolutely the level of digitalization is going to increase and it's going to change our lives for uh, the future. And thank you also, Jure, uh, for uh, leading this panel. And of course, uh, a big thanks to all of the participants. It was great to see so many questions and we did try to answer uh, everything. And if there are going to be some more questions or anything, feel free to send me a feedback via email. If you have missed the links, there have been a lot of them today with uh, more uh, inspiring and interesting content. I have all of them. So again, reach out to me. And of course, I would like to invite you all to join us the next week for the webinar on cyber security. So as you can see, we are moving on the topics and going deeper and deeper into interesting uh, spheres. And uh, of course, we will see each other again here next Tuesday, same time, same venue. So thank you again. Thank you, guest speakers. Uh, thank you, Jure. And uh, of course, uh, I wish you all uh, a good night to, Slovenian, uh, to Slovenians and of course, a good day ahead to uh, my and our American counterparts. Thank you and see you next Tuesday. Bye. Yeah, bye.